expect that there will be some people named in these lawsuits that will raise some eyebrows. He has an out option and that is popping a cyanide pill. That are so serious that it would likely uh, leave uh, Sean Combs in jail the rest of his life. But, no, Cho, but Cho, I mean, you might have said the same thing about Jeffrey Epstein. He's going to be indicted for the murder of Tupac in a notorious B.I.G. We got Akon at the airport. The way he spoke about this, Hollywood generally has not, like, spoken out. The business in itself is taking a, a, a shift. Music hasn't been the greatest role model for our youth. I just think it's a spiritual shift that's happening. Mind our own business, and we just gotta sit back and relax and watch. Somebody has a target for being for their success. I mean, that, at least that's how the lawyer's playing it. And whatever people are doing on their personal time is something they have to deal with on their own. It's not the first time we've heard this rhetoric, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, but it's a defensive mechanism at the end of the day. <laughs> and he knows better than be talking about the things that he does with Big Brother Puff on national television. <laughs> Apparently not. Something, <laughs> everything ain't for everybody. He believes he's innocent. Uh, I believe he's innocent. And we're going to fight this case with all of our might until we don't have to fight any longer. From Janice Smalls Combs, who is Diddy's mother. I come to you today as a mother that is devastated and profoundly saddened by the allegations made against my son, Sean Combs. To bear witness what seems to be like a public lynching of my son is a pain too unbearable to put into words. It is heartbreaking to see my son judged not for the truth, but for a narrative created out of lies. These allegations are egregious. Ferret this out in the court system. Uh, we intend to prove our cases. I've talked to these victims and uh, I believe them. So uh, that's exactly what I would expect his mother to say. Just the fact you've got 120 already that you're repping, and you're getting so many calls, 12,000 calls in 24 hours, including many new allegations involving minors. What does that tell you about the scale of all this? It's true. I, I want people to know that are people that call that have bits of information, bits of evidence, uh, video, perhaps pictures, thousands of people calling, and hundreds of alleged victims. And how could that possibly be the case? And then, of course, we're particularly interested in in people that, that had interaction with Mr. Combs and, and what they say happened to them. Conduct that allegedly occurred over a 25-year period. Multiple different venues each time has been alleged. Uh, typically, it involves some sort of uh, illicit substance placed in someone's drink, taken advantage of. And that's kind of the, the, the overarching theme here. Glance, you say, my goodness, that's just impossible that that many people would call uh, with information, particular uh, modus operandi. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Is at the top of the pyramid here. Generally, you give deals to the people who are lower in the pyramid in order to get them to uh, testify right. against the top. Uh, an alleged secret video of an A-list celebrity participating and the unnamed celebrity knows about it. So two anonymous sources have told the New York Post that the video is being shopped around to media outlets. A-list celebrity is, quote, horrified that this footage is being shopped around. It says it's not revealing who the celebrity is because it's not clear if he was a minor when the footage was filmed. Sources say both Combs and the other male's faces are visible in this sex tape. The person who has the tape really doesn't want to shop it around. They really want to help and give it to the, wanted to directly sell it to that person. That person does have the opportunity to purchase the video. If I were them, I would absolutely. It's a famous Hollywood story that Howard Stern didn't like Diddy's all white parties, but that's just a small part of the bigger story about the famous music mogul and his fancy parties in the early 2000s. Diddy's white parties were the epitome of high society events, setting the bar for a list gatherings. Weren't just parties. They were cultural moments where the biggest names in entertainment, fashion, and media got together in flawless white attire to create a visual spectacle in the Hamptons or in opulent venues around the world. The atmosphere was dripping with glamour, luxury, and the promise of a night to remember. But behind the perfectly curated image of these star-studded events, rumors swirled about what really went down when the cameras stopped rolling. The parties were undeniably exclusive. Getting invited meant figuring out the different levels of access. Once inside, some of the industry's biggest names could be seen mixing with Diddy's Harlem crew, old money elites, and other celebrities, but things were much more mysterious. Ooh, that's my mama. Go mama. Oh. oh. Hi. She's getting a drip with me. She's hydrating. What's up, ma?
Moms are single. I ain't gonna hate on my moms. She's single. <laughs> and yeah, my mom's single. Yeah. But she don't stop. But she could touch she could touch um the floor with her palm. Hey mom, what's going on? Are you starting to cook, right? Yes. I said no. We're gonna have a big Thanksgiving here. Because I like to cook a lot. Oh. Ribs, fried chicken, cornbread. I'm just getting a close up of you. We love you, mom. Thank you for you. Let's go. People who say they attended his infamous parties and are not surprised by the allegations against him. This is Diddy. Like at a Diddy party, he's always going to be turning up. Y'all not at Diddy's house? Y'all not nowhere. Uh, I'm just wild on how he's just able to keep all that energy. Sometimes they provide breakfast in the uh, morning and it's like you could chill. The lawsuit suggests that the Duke of Sussex was one of the guests at Combs' infamous parties. Now Prince Harry has been named in a $30 million lawsuit against the hip hop mogul who is facing charges of trafficking and sexual abuse, allegedly attended by sex workers and underage girls. In my opinion, I think that they're probably looking at RICO or racketeering charges. Each one of those charges carries with it a 25 year sentence. Digital evidence can be very, very tiny. And so when you're looking for flash drives, you are going to have to start looking in walls, um, taking apart furniture, cameras, those kinds of things, cameras that are recording, those kinds of things. So agents were concerned that Diddy or his associates were deleting evidence. That was my tip off to why this evidence was probably digital in nature, which is exactly why, in my opinion, they searched the homes simultaneously at the exact same time. My guess is that they knew that there was a chance um, that evidence could be destroyed or was going to be destroyed. At the time, Paris Hilton was a big name in the party scene. She talked about the first white party and how famous it was, praising the mix of people from different backgrounds. The guest list had a mix of famous people, from Leonardo DiCaprio to New York's elite socialites, which made the event more interesting. However, even for those fortunate enough to secure a spot on the guest list, the experience was significantly different when interacting with celebrities. Kai Jones, a former pussycat doll, has also said that she has been speaking out about Diddy and the crazy music industry for years since 2017, but no one has paid attention. She told the truth about how she felt pressured to sleep with people in the industry and has been calling out Hollywood EXEs for years. Now, Diddy is in jail awaiting trial for some seriously scandalous charges. Over 120 accusers have come forward threatening him with a storm of accusations. On X, even Elon Musk asked who in the entertainment business knew about this. Jones was quick to tell him, I told you, but no one paid attention. Tom Swoop, a music industry insider, offered a deeper look into the intricacies of the party's structure. According to Swoop, there were clear lines of access within the party, while the general event was an unforgettable experience for many. Only a select few were ushered into the inner sanctum. Here, as the evening progressed and the more public festivities wrapped up, things reportedly took a more grown-up turn. Diddy would make announcements later in the night instructing families and anyone with younglings to leave before the true rye began. What happened behind those velvet ropes remained a mystery to most, but whispers suggested that the after-hours events catered to those old enough to indulge in the wild side of the glamorous life. He is very eager to tell his story. This is the type of indictment you would expect from someone in the mafia. Reputation. Uh, is over. The United States government, they start making this case as a takedown of a successful black man. Brought in new lawyers to try and get this done. Appeals court says the judge was wrong. The judge should have allowed him to post bail, which is exactly what they are going to try and do. The judge abuse his discretion because ultimately this is a discretionary thing. And what the trial judge was saying is, look, he is a flight risk and a danger to say we're going to superimpose our view of it over the trial judge's view of it in the sense of that he's tried to witnesses. intimidate and influence witnesses in the case it's going to be hard to make that case to reverse what the trial judge did at the appellate court level Alexandra shapiro is one of the nation's premier appellate lawyers she is the real deal suppose if there's some grounds for appeal that we're not seeing harvey she's going to find diddy is going to surely need 
a dream team much like OJ, and we are looking forward to the trial of a century. Jail is terrible for anybody. And the bigger they come, the harder they fall. And I sort of think that's what the purian interest of the public is, to have the exact opposite. What a life-changing moment. I mean, it's just incredible. Why is he not being given bond? And, you know, we can debate that all day long. He's got the resources to flee, but he's so recognizable. And isn't he innocent until proven guilty? You have this much evidence and so much stuff out there. You can't think as a human being, the judge isn't thinking that some people are more likely to be guilty than others. And what if he's vindicated? What if he's acquitted? Then he, had he ever given back those few months of incarceration? I mean, it's a legitimate concern. You know, no judge wants to wake up and read the headlines the next day. Sometimes where there's money, you can craft a unique solution. And now he's gone and he fled from justice. So that's what's in the back of most judges' minds. Sounds like special treatment. But the truth of the matter is, to incarcerate somebody like him, all the money he has and all the resources he has, they couldn't craft some solution that lets him be under some form of house arrest. Maybe some solution where his money could help us craft, I mean, he could build a separate jail cell. I wouldn't want to be those judges. There's sort of a no-win situation for the judge. What we would do for anybody else, which is keep him incarcerated. Russell Brand also talked about his strange forced vacation with P. Diddy in a resurfaced 2010 interview. Rand said that Diddy took him to Vegas while they were working on Get Him to the Greek, but it wasn't your average vacation. Brand joked that Diddy was so powerful and influential that you'd end up doing everything from feeding his fish to picking him up at the airport, all the while wondering how you became his errand boy. Russell made it clear that he's not anyone's stooch, not even Diddy's. But despite all the glitz and glamour, not everyone was charmed. Jack Osborne in a now unearthed 2003 clip seemed to send something off about Diddy way before the accusations and criminal charges came to light after his sister Kelly Osborne was given a diamond. Watch by Diddy. Jack didn't mince words. He straight up said I don't if on trust it. Kelly, for her part, seemed dazzled by the gift, but Jack had a negative feeling. Their mom, Sharon Osborne, chimed in with her usual outlandish humor, jokingly about Diddy's willy in ways that feel uncomfortable in hindsight considering the serious allegations against him today. The Osbournes were far from the only ones with stories about Diddy over the years. His image shifted from a playful, extravagant party king to someone embroiled in increasingly scandalous claims. He's a monster. monster. He's literally a monster. This man is going to go down. It is incredibly disturbing footage. He hosted what he called freak-offs, uh, parties so brutal that the young men and women from being drunk, they would be beaten, they would be raped, would sometimes vomit and pass out. They alleged that, that Diddy filmed it. I've kept this very quiet for 14 years. I mean, it's been a very long time, and it was so hard for me to watch. And I, like, cried for days because I just couldn't believe that that man was physically her like that certain that the amount of stuff that we've heard about is probably not the half of it he's a monster he's literally a monster friendly neighborhood international rap mogul superstar designer extraordinaire actor you know i do it all baby my homegirl cassie right here she's a human being that's what we all love about her. sure will love her one day this is bad boy we ain't never gonna stop. There's no way that he was doing this alone. He was enabled. He had he had multiple EAs and PAs, and I have no idea who saw who was his fixer. Like a Shakespearean tragedy, how this man is gonna go down. And those are extremely difficult cases to defend yourself against. Very difficult. What's happening now, Cassie opened up the floodgates. So the damage he's done to so many different people, and hopefully these people can move forward from this. Hopefully. Do you know Sean Combs? Puff Daddy? Yeah. P. Diddy, whatever you call himself. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's part of what's called the Boulet. The, the Boulet. Is, the Boulet is a branch of the Illuminati. I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would, uh, he would mess and tell me what to do with Cassie. And Sean talks a lot on the on the phone and on the TV with people and stuff. And I would be in the, I was like a slave, okay? I had like 15 encounters and I heard a lot about business because what they would do is I called Herpes and I came back and I seen for Herpes and won. And Christopher Leon's here was my turn. They asked me to turn in that. Mark Gerros and Ben Mercedes were his attorneys, okay? It's possible I, I threw everything out as possible I can produce a copy. The hip-hop agenda is 
an agenda to move drugs all over the United States. They move, you need to inform the DEA. Okay, all the dope on private jets, which don't get screened by the DEA. Okay. DEA. Inside the United States, okay, they move cocaine and they move cr uh, liquid cocaine in their bottles too. It's not good. He drinks it all the time. Usher's association with Diddy is another intriguing angle that has raised eyebrows. Back in the day, a teenage Usher spent time at Diddy's parties, and while much was made of the mentorship between them later, revelations have hinted at a darker side to that relationship. Usher himself has made comments that, looking back, suggest he knew more than he let on about the inner workings of Diddy's world. Whether it was freak offs, a rumored term for the wild escapades at Diddy's parties, or other eyebrow raising activities, there's always been a sense that only insiders knew the full truth. Then there is the ongoing saga of Diddy's fall from grace. His arrest and federal charges shocked many, but those who had been watching his rise and fall from the start were less surprised. The man who once prided himself on breaking down racial and generational barriers with his parties now faces the possibility of a very different legacy, one marred by serious accusations that could see him remembered not as the music industry powerhouse but as a criminal mastermind who exploited his power for personal gain. This thing turns into something that when y'all get older, y'all don't want to come to. Okay. Hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I saying? I went there to see the lifestyle. Woman didn't come along. I didn't say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was it was pretty wild. There were very curious things taking place. Uh-huh. And I didn't necessarily understand. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. Yeah. I actually stayed up longer than them. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell know? no. My goal was to get this far in Hollywood and still have a virgin and I never has sucked a pst. That was my only goal. You could be Kang the Conqueror and they could take your rabbit ass down in two weekends. But I'm not gonna act like I'm not scared of them. I have a reason to be scared. I've had to turn down $50 million four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, uh, cause P Diddy be wanting to party. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say them. Yeah, and you gotta tell him no. You got to tell him no. I did. Footage from Diddy's raid allegedly shows Kim Kardashian in scenes that are set to send shockwaves through the entertainment industry. And whistleblowers are coming forward to expose Kim's role in the business. This dumbass lawyer said he probably got it at Costco. <laughs> Marley, you been to the Hollywood party. What's going on at these Hollywood parties? I left early. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty Diddy parties. I left early. I swear to you, I've never seen, I never, never, those aren't the type of parties that I I go to. The stuff that they, they claim to it. be going on. I never seen it. When I hear about it, when did that happen? Yes. At what time did this go down? Yes. I've never seen any of this. I'm like, because I was there until 3.30. You mean at 332? <laughs> so they waiting for me to leave? Like, all right, good. I've never seen it. Never seen nothing. If I buy a party, I like my own party. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, even if I'm me and, you know, yeah. this, this is my, my yeah. party. This is my swell swell Ain't swell no air play. Play. For rap mogul Sean Diddy Combs, also known as P. Diddy or Puff Daddy through the years. Diddy, like Epstein, has long been rumored to be a federal informant, pointed out famously by rapper Kanye West. The type of party you might find on Jeffrey Epstein's island, or... Come, no, no, hold on, hold on. Okay. Are you fake hard as f You know what I'm saying? I don't because you can't f nobody in. As far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these f All you fake hard f you. Wait, anyway, and the reason why you got talks because you did a deal, you fed. The past always seems to catch up with the present in Hollywood, 
And nowhere is this more obvious than in the stories of those once associated with Diddy. Howard Stern's bathroom debacle may have been amusing at the time, but it now feels like a small glimpse into a much more complex narrative. Stern may have been treated poorly because of his status, but for many others, it seems the stakes were far higher. What started as rumors about uncomfortable situations at Diddy's parties have grown into full-blown criminal investigations. The glamorous exterior has been peeled back, and what's underneath is anything but shiny. It's not just the world of entertainment that's reeling from these revelations. The broader public, too, is beginning to question how much they really knew about the behind-the-scenes activities of their favorite stars. Jack Osborne's protective feelings for his sister seem predominant now, but how many other young stars might have fallen victim to Diddy's manipulations? The fact that so many powerful people attended his parties and stayed quiet raises unsee comfortable questions about complicity. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.